Welcome to the bachelor's course of physical education. Let us talk about the execution in Kho Kho. Kho Kho is essentially a game of speed and nerve control developed as a rural support of India. It is based upon agility, speed and endurance. Like all Indian games, it is simple, inexpensive and enjoyable. It does, however, demand physical fitness, strength, speed and stamina and a certain amount of ability. This is a game which is played almost in every age group. Dodging, fainting and burst of control speed make this game quite thrilling. To catch by persuade, to chase rather than just run is the capstone of Kho Kho. The game develops qualities such as obedience, discipline, sportsmanship and loyalty between team members. Let us first discuss about the terms and definitions used in Kho Kho. Team Kho Kho is played between two teams of 12 players each one of which only a player take the field for a match. Players are numbered 1 to 12. The dimensions of the number bring 10 centimeters to 2 centimeters in front and 20 centimeters 2 centimeters at the back. Change of number is not permitted during the match. Changes players of a team who occupy the squares of the Kho Kho field facing alternatively ready to receive Kho and persuade chase the members of the opponent team to touch and put them out are technically called changes. The one who is actually pursuing the runners at a given moment of time is called the active chaser. Runners, players of a team defending themselves against chasing are called the runners. Defenders, the runners who actually are on the field of play in a batch of three to dodge and defend their team against the attack of the chasers are known as defenders. Substitutes, a player who plays in place of another member of the team due to any reason with the permission of the referee after the acceptance of a request from the team captain to this effect. Technique in Kho Kho Setting positions of chasers Chasers will occupy settings in the squares of the central lane facing alternatively the opposite second boundaries in lines ready to receive Kho and persuade chase. There are two methods of sitting in the square, parallel toe method, bullet toe method, parallel toe method. In this method, the sitting chaser sits within the square keeping both feet parallel to each other. The distance between both the feet should be 5 to 6 centimeters as per comfort of the player. More body weight should be on the toes. The chasers will keep his hand outside the central lane with the thumb separate and the fingers together. His shoulder should be parallel to the central lane. The knees will be flexed and kept parallel. The head in little tilting forward position can be turned to any side. Body should be kept in a ready position to get up. Bullet toe method. In this position, the chaser will sit in the square in full squared position, keeping one toe, right foot or the strong foot, little ahead of other with comfortable distance between the feet and shall be according to the height and comfort of the chaser. The body weight is equally distributed on the toes but supported by hands. The placement of hands are kept beyond the central lane. 
with thumbs and fingers that are in cup shape remain separated. Body is kept straight and the eyes looking straight. Advantages method Both parallel toe style and the bullet toe style have their merits and the demerits singly. They suit some players, they may not suit others. The most advantageous method, however, good coaches consider is to sit on toes with thighs parallel to the ground and heels completely lifted up, thumbs and fingers in cup shape placed just outside the central and cross lane give the needed support. How to give co co giving position of active chaser? Active chasers can run only in one direction either right or left and cannot change his direction of chase at any cost until he reaches the free zone. He cannot cut across the chasers who sit in the squares. Pronouncing the word co and a smooth delicate touch by hand are requirements of the right procedure of giving co to the sitting chaser by an active chaser. This is an artistic skill which a player acquires after correct and constant practice. Most novices not only shout kho too loudly but also push the sitting chaser hard thereby unbalancing him which result in wastage of time, a definite disadvantage to the chasers. There are several ways of giving kho such as giving kho by keeping a step behind the cross lane, giving kho by keeping a step in the cross lane, giving kho by a step forward in the cross lane. However, the best way is the one which suits the occasion and occasions with no violation of the rules by the chaser. The chasers can hand over his mission to his teammates, other chasers by giving a kho in the following manner. Simple kho. To give kho perfectly, the active chaser should touch a sitting chaser by hand from behind and utter only the word kho loudly and distinctly. The entire action should be smooth, no chaser should be pushed while giving the active chaser's feet should not go beyond that cross line. Immediately after giving kho, he has to occupy the square vacated by the new chaser who was moved out by him. Judgment Kho Generally, judgment kho or taking method is used during the matches often when the chaser is near to the pole. Keeping one leg over the cross line, the active chaser stretches his other leg as far as possible near the pole and rotating his hand, he gives kho, forcing the defender to think that he is coming to run around the pole, simultaneously he will give kho to the chaser sitting near to the pole. Thus, the chaser can easily put the runner out. Late kho. This method is used during the game when a runner falls upon a changed strategy. The active chaser observes the runner's movement and gives kho to a chaser in a slightly delayed manner. Delayed or late, kho should break runner's speed as the speed is well synchronized with calling out kho. Advanced kho. When a runner opens double chain, the active chaser gives kho to the nearby chaser earlier than expected. Technically, Kho is given either using cross step method or proximal method. These methods need a little explanation in term of body mechanics and dynamics. Cross step method. When an active chaser gives Kho on his left side, 
he stretches out his right leg so that his body weight is sustained on the left leg with bent body. Then stretching forward his leg and shifting his body weight from left leg to right leg. He gives Ko by his left hand in two steps. His eyes will look straight. Proximal method. Proximal method also requires Ko to be given in two steps. If the active chaser chooses to give Ko from the left side, he should first stretch out his left leg remaining at distance 3 to 4 centimeters from the central lane and 60 to 70 centimeters from the cross lane. In this method, the distance adjustment takes place according to the height of the flag. The chaser will give Ko on the left hand. While giving Ko, the chaser's arm will remain straight. Soldiers parallel to the central lane with bent body. Tapping. Tapping is an attempt by a chaser to touch a defender by extending his arm to the fullest possible extent towards the chaser when he is on the post or on the center lane trying to cross it in under two escape. This requires electrical speed and perfect timing. A defender moving transverse to the direction of chasing to cross the center lane or just running ahead may be within sprinting distance of an active chaser, but if the active chaser tries to put out the defender by mere tagging, foul may be committed at the central lane or the defender may escape by fraction of a second and with a few inches to cover by him. Therefore, by accelerating speed, an active chaser covers up the distance and by bending extend his hand as long as possible to tap that is just touch the heel of the defender which at that time is nearest to him. Covering. Covering is also one of the most important technique. It is equally important and essential to get up from the square as fast as possible to cover the runner with a good speed of movement and concentration. Tap him and put him out with a swift touch or a dive at him. Covering can be done into the following methods having their respective merits and demerits. Covering on same leg method. When the chaser takes out his left leg first and runs to the left side, it is covering on same leg method. Here legs will be fixed at knees, body and neck should be in a bending position and center of gravity will fall ahead of body. Covering with the cross leg method. When chaser's right leg is ahead and he want to move to his left side, then he will use cross leg method of covering. Monkey crawl. When the chaser wants to conceal the direction of chase while moving forward in the cross lane, he uses crawling method. Crawl can be short crawling, medium crawling, long crawling. While doing short crawling, legs will be bending at knees. Torso should be parallel to the ground. Shoulders remain straight with both hands in the downward direction can touch the ground without the body weight falling on them. Head almost in lock position with eyes watching the runner's feet. Here center of gravity will fall little ahead of body. After judging the runner, the chaser can follow any method or movement to touch the runner by accelerating the speed with agility. In short crawling, the chaser take a short crawl for judging the runner and accordingly 
immediately turned and moved towards runner with speed and agility to touch the runner. In medium crawling, the chaser moves in crawling position with balance and eyeing on runner and midway turns around runners according to the movement of runner with speed to touch him. Eyeing on runners movement, he runs with accelerate speed in the direction of runner to touch him. Diving in Coco chasing side chaser needs and requires something more than merely running. It needs sudden explosive jump drive or bouncing at the runner to get him out. Technically, bouncing at the runner is diving which is often used to cover up maximum distance in minimum of time when a defender just cannot be touched by overcoming the distance with mere speed in chase and runner escapes by a few steps or tries to run away through the open space. Generally, in diving the target is the defender's heel. Diving is very effectively executed when an active chaser is either in full speed or he attempts a dive immediately after turning around the post. Excellent diving involves fine judgment of the speed of the defender, the distance to be covered, the confidence to execute it without sensing injury to either side, the explosive strength or jump of chaser, mental alertness and anticipation of runner's movement by chaser. Diving in Coco is attempted at least in the following three ways. Sitting, diving, as soon as the seated chaser receives Kho while sitting in bullet start position and he anticipate that the runner is within his reach, he drives forward towards the opponent with explosive bouncing on his toes with fully stretched body position and arms get fully extended to touch the runner. In such diving, the chaser lands his thigh supported by hands, touch the ground first and then his abdomen to avoid injury. The entire sequence of movement is a simple coordinated movement and is performed swiftly. Whether the chaser is successfully in touching the runner or not, he must quickly get up and resume the chase. Diving while running, when an active chaser thinks, feel, anticipate to have the confidence that he can touch the runner who is within his reach with a dive, he may suddenly control his running speed and dive at the runner with full arm and body extension. While running the chaser gets pushed from the ground and explosive leap movement with his feet and in diving leap forward movement he stretches his full body with arms in extended position in the air parallel to the ground. The active chaser to avoid any injury and resume next movement he lands on thigh supported by hands when the ground first and then abdomen. The entire movement is a single coordinated movement and is performed swiftly. Pole dive. One of the best and effective technique used by active chasers to touch the runner is pole diving. During chase when the runner is near to the pole, the active chaser uses the technique of pole dive to touch the runner on the other side of the central lane. In this technique, the active chaser 
when reaches near the pole he take a co movement to dodge the runner at pole and keeps the nearer leg near the pole held the pole by grasping the pole with hands flex movement of hands at elbow placing the thigh along with the pole for support and to increase the range lifts the other leg and learns quickly in attempt to touch the runner with his hand this technique is very effective on comparatively slow defenders and in game in four type defense this technique is also known as fake and pole dive precautions in the use of pole dive the active chaser can change his direction only after crossing the cross line he will neither touch the central lane nor ground on the far side of the central lane during pole dive the active chaser shall not pull back the foul on which he is standing running pole dive it is a variation of pole dive it may also be executed with the same principle as those of the pole dive except that the active chaser hits the pole without any hindrance and turning from behind the use of this dive requires utmost caution against injury and also maintaining balance of body unexpected change of the target while pursuing one or the two defenders in a go the intelligent confident chaser suddenly shift his attention and movement to the third defender who might be standing at a safe support inside the ground thus create pressure on his runner trapping the runner can be trapped and put out depending upon how intelligently chaser execute his skill and have the capability players are accustomed to play with a set chase patterns because they praise in that manner they generally find a natural advantage around the post as a result quite often they are trapped with the post to left chase disturbing their stepping timing rhythm and ability to overcome the skill of touching at post and judgment co by the chasers for a single chair defense every next chaser should be given co without any foul so that the defender is forced to go to the post to be finally getting trapped there for a double chair defense the defender must be allowed to follow the safe route he is following either by omitting a co or using the skill of judgment co touching at the post for a game in four defense break the path by a middle co that is co being given to the second player in the ring or putting out the defender by quick covering and then with a dive or tap after a short turn foot dragging and dodge by dragging his rear foot the active chase does a defender while in hot pursuit important guidelines for the chasers success of the chasing mission does not simply depend on the skill level of the chasers but on the intelligence ingenuity and mental ability with which skills are used at a given moment of time therefore the chasers should always keep the following in their mind not a single player but the entire team should chase focus should be on the defender and their weaknesses do not wait or be eager or impatient for it shoulder line and not the head movement decide chaser's direction thus shoulder line should be according to the strategy of a chaser cover 
to avoid dope turned it helps to put forward that leg towards the end where the heart is directed put out if you can but reducing the distance from the defender is a must speed for chase is an asset not an ultimate goal hold the post in both hands if a defender can be put out by chasing do not resort to touching of post do not force two defenders of sound game in four defense towards the post on indication of foul it is safe to take the indicated direction and give a perfect kho quickly conclusion kho kho is a game played on a rectangular court between two teams of 12 players each kho kho is a test of speed strength and stamina thank you have a nice day